Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fit a Durace R9100 rear derailleur to your bike. So, I'll go ahead, I'll run through all the steps so you should be able to complete the installation yourself on your own bike. So we'll go ahead and we'll get stuck into it. Right, so here we have the uh, derailleur itself. Comes in the box like so. Then you've got your piece of outer cable there. Like that. So if yours comes with a piece of cable like so, the outer cable, you put it in it new. Um, what you've got to be careful of with this cable is obviously there you've got a metal end and a plastic end. So the metal end will go to the derailleur itself and the plastic end goes to your frame. So remember that, the metal end to the derailleur. Now you may have to cut this cable the outer cable here to length depending on what your setup is and what your frame is. You can see up in there it's got a plastic, a white plastic piece like so that's flared on the end. It's a flared piece. So if you've got to cut this cable down, obviously that goes to the metal piece like that. So what you want to do is make sure that you cut it down from the opposite end, not that where the flared plastic is. So cut it down from this end because the flare doesn't go all the way through. As you can see, there's no flare piece on there. So the white that white piece goes up so far that you can cut it off, but don't cut it from the uh, the flared plastic end there, which will go to the derailleur with the metal end on it. Right, so we have the actual rear derailleur itself. Now this is where you mount it to the frame. That's a 5mm hex head, Allen key. Then you've got your pinch bolt for your cable, which is there. And that's a 4mm hex head. And the adjustments are made via 2mm hex head. And the adjustment screws are on the back there. So you've got your high screw there, low screw at the bottom there. And the final adjustment screw or the B screw is that one there. So that's basically a run through of that. Right, so first step was to remove your chain from your bike, obviously. And then what you have to do is just uh, make sure you've shifted down to the 11 at the back. And then you can remove your rear derailleur. Now, if you know how old your outer cables and inner cable are, then you could keep them if they're not very old. If, if you're not sure how old they are, there's... Uh, beneficial at this stage to fit new outers and an inner cable because it just helps with the overall shifting um, so if you don't know how old they are I would recommend fitting a new um, outers and inner cable so obviously what I said shift down to the 11 at the back before you remove your rear derailleur um, and then what we go ahead and do Make sure you put a little bit of grease on your thread and then we get 5mm hex head and we mount the derailleur on. But before we uh, go ahead and mount the derailleur onto the hanger, make sure that the little lug there and the corresponding lug at the back, make sure they're touching each other as you tighten it up. Make sure they are actually touching the lug there and obviously you want to be touching it against the little bump there. So we go ahead and we put this on. Right, as you can see there, we got the lug, the bottom lug there, touching the derailleur hanger. And then what you want to do is, you go ahead, 5mm obviously, and then torque it up. So it's 8 to 10 newton meters on this one, on the mounting bolt. So once you're happy with that, we can move on to the next step. Right, so once we got the uh, derailleur mounted on there, to the hanger, what you want to do is get a 2 mil hex head and then locate your low screw which is the bottom one. Now what we're going to do is adjust that so as if you push the drain over by hand you can see at the minute as it comes out the box it's in line with the 10th sprocket so it's not going over to the 11 it's in line with the 10 which is no good obviously so what we want to do is get that over to the 11 so as when you do that, it's touching the lever. But what you want to do is move it so the top jockey wheel there is past the 11 sprocket 
just towards the spokes a bit. So with your 2mm hex head, locate your low screw there and turn it anti-clockwise until it moves over just past the 11, put it inside of the 11 slightly. So we'll go ahead and do that. Right, so we made the adjustment, as you can see there. Now we've got it so the top jockey wheel just, just slips behind the 11 sprocket by altering the low screw, like so. The reason it's not in line is because when you put it in line, you'll tension the cable up when, you, when we go to install the cable. And because it's, as it takes the tension up, it'll move, it'll stop about halfway between the two or it'll move back to the 10. And that'll be no good. And then you'll be wondering why you can't, when you shift up on your shifter, you're not getting to the 11. If you just put it past the 11, just to allow for when you tension the cable up, when, you put, when you're pinching the cable up, that's all it is. Otherwise, if you put it in line with the 11, you'll end up on the 10. And you wonder why it won't go to the 11 when you're shifting. So just put it just past the uh, 11 sprocket, so the top jockey wheel slips behind it to start with. So then we move on to the high screw, which obviously the, what it's doing is you've got to look behind, find the jockey wheel again and line it up, adjust it so it comes over in line with the 11, the smallest one in the top jockey wheel. At the minute it's in line, it's halfway in between the uh, third one in, so it's nowhere near in line at the minute, so we've got to bring it over. So locate your high screw, 2mm hex head again, and we'll adjust that and uh, bring it in line. Right, so we've got it in line now, so that's your high screw, like I said, and just it anti-clockwise, and it brings it over in line, so it's dead in line. Just, up, just smack bang in line when you're looking behind, like that, dead in line. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and attach the uh, cable through the pinch bolt. Right, so... When you've done the high and low adjustments there, you're ready just to put your cable through your pinch bolt. And then what you can do is, if you've just fitted a new cable, you'll find that it's really long, you can uh, pull on the cable easier because you can wrap it around your hand a bit better and you can pull on it. Obviously it's still shifted, make sure that your shift lever is still on the 11. Then pull on it tight and snug up the pinch bolt at the same time as you're pulling on the cable. If you're not using a new cable then you might find it easier to remove the back wheel and then you'll be able to get to the end of the cable easier to pull it in the direction that you want because obviously there won't be so much cable sticking out and it'll be short so you find with a new cable you can get a better pull on the cable before you pinch the uh, bolt up and that's a 4mm hex head the pinch bolt and it's uh, 7 newton meters um, torque on that so once you gone ahead and done that then what you can do is you can shift up to your largest at the back now you can just check that you're going to have enough clearance there for the chain to pass through so enough gap there for a chain to pass through Obviously you don't want it anywhere near the teeth touching each other because the chain won't be able to get through and you won't be able to shift up onto the uh, largest sprocket at the back. So you need enough gap for the chain to pass through. So it's sort of like an 8mm gap or something like that. The width of a chain or a bit more just to allow for the chain to go through there obviously. So to adjust that, if yours is, it could be set and it only come into here say. So to get it to adjust so you've got a gap all you do is you can locate your uh, B screw there which is a dark coloured one and you can turn it obviously by, so by turning it anti-clockwise you can turn it clockwise to make the gap bigger, you can see the gap as I'm turning it clockwise, the gap's just getting bigger and bigger. So just set it somewhere 
so you've got enough gap for your chain to pass through like so and then what you go ahead and do then is refit your chain back onto the bike and then we run through and then you can just index the gears with the barrel adjuster now at this point if you was fitting say if you had a long cage like a GS on the back and you was going down to a short cage then you, you obviously need to resize your chain because now it's going to be too long um, that's just another thing to take into consideration you may have to take a few links out of your chain at this stage if you're going down from a, say a long cage to a short cage right so once you've got your chain refitted you can shift up to your largest sprocket at the back and then just check that you've got enough room for the chain to pass through okay if not then you can just adjust your uh, limit screw B screw there just to allow enough gap for the chain now you must resize your chain like I said earlier if you're going to a short cage railer from a long cage so you have to take a couple of links out of it um, so once you've done that you can go ahead and run the gears on the stand there now your barrel adjuster is there see so what you want to do is come down the gears you find that it's probably about you set it about between the second and third so you just put it on the third two for the back there and adjust it there obviously you want it silent you don't want it so it's making a noise there you want it quiet on that so if you just turn your barrel adjuster obviously with it set to say the third there then just pedal and then by turning your barrel adjuster you can either get it to change up to the fourth or down to the second obviously you want it smack bang on the third so it's just running nice and quiet on the third and then obviously check all your other gears make sure you haven't got any uh, ones that are half changing or anything like that in, in amongst it you might find that you've got a half change you shift up and it won't shift to the next one or you're shifting back down it's making a lot of noise and it isn't quite going back down to the next one so in that case obviously you need to adjust your barrel adjuster and obviously check it on your inner chain ring at the front and your outer chain ring just to make sure that all your gears are working correctly you know you may have to go out for a ride um, and then double check it again after you've been out for a short ride done some gear changes to make sure that you haven't got any if you're fitting a new cable you might find that the cable stretches a little bit and you might find that you might have to make an, a couple of turn adjustment or a little adjustment um, just to eradicate any problem gears you've got after the cable stretch if you fitted a new one right so once you're happy with your adjustments you can go ahead if you fitted a new cable then once you're completely happy with them the settings then you go ahead and snip your cable off and crimp on a an end stop there just be careful and make sure that it's out of the way of the spokes you cut it short enough and it's not protruding into the spokes so just go through the gears and make sure it's not going to interfere with your spokes so just in case anyone's wondering this is a 32 cassette on the back um, just in case you wonder if you can fit a 32 so you can obviously it only says you can fit an 1130 with a Dura Race uh, short case derailleur so this is actually a 32 as you can see there Right guys, so there's the installation complete behind me, so if you follow the steps it's very straightforward to do. If you'd like to know how to fit the uh, front derailleur to your bike, then I'll uh, put a couple of links for that in the description, so you may find it um, helpful. So remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Until next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.